hello guys and uh, welcome to another video so I had this uh, Microsoft uh, 800 uh, keyboard and mouse wireless 800 desktop keyboard and mouse with me and I've already done a video in which I have uh, added uh, lithium uh, uh, iron battery support to the keyboard uh, what happened recently was that my dongle which comes with the mouse got dodgy so as you can see I tried everything with this attaching a new USB part, soldering, reflowing, everything but then uh, gone so what Microsoft says is uh, well, uh, sorry you cannot buy a new dongle so you know what we do here we take it apart okay so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open this mouse and uh, I've already done the keyboard so I know what is there inside the keyboard and there isn't much which we can get out of it but what we'll do in this video is try to open, rip open this mouse and see what we can use it for, what we can extract out of it so let's get the tools so first thing to do is remove all the extra parts okay and then the basic part of taking it apart is remove all the screws which you can find now beware whenever you are opening things like these which has uh, the small uh, tapes and all around always remove all the tapes to see if there is something within like see aha two hidden screws so we will go ahead and take that apart also and now it should be let's let's first check the top two also if there are any hidden screws there uh, no uh, it seems that there aren't any hidden screws over here so we will just go ahead and stick that back on and try to open this mouse apart and with a sheer bit of force it comes apart now this is the actual mouse now, I've already uh, gone ahead and searched the part so this is the receiver dongle which it comes with you can have a better look uh, now the problem with this receiver dongle is that the IC which, is used, which it uses is a Nordic Semiconductor so NRF LO I guess uh, uh, so this particular IC is a one time programmable 2.4 GHz IC with an enhanced shock and burst protocol so pretty much useless for us okay so coming back to the main mouse now let us go ahead and see if there are any cables which we can turn apart so as you can see that this particular small uh, cable is attached to the main board using a small connector so we'll go and plug that thing off and then we should be able to remove this entire battery housing assembly now this battery housing assembly is pretty decent and uh, can be reused so i'll just go ahead and keep this coming to the main circuit board now uh, in the main circuit board it's connected with the two of the screws you can see uh, one screw is uh, here and one screw is somewhere bottom there so I'll go ahead and remove this and get the main board out okay so with a little bit of more force I finally have the circuit board okay so it looks pretty neat first thing which I go ahead and see is just check how they have implemented the RF section I mean like what the RF antenna is just next to the active components there is barely a little bit of uh, air gap there for the radiation and there is no no clearance like I mean again what like if you can see there is no clearance on this side you directly have a uh, small switch which is sitting right there if you can press it you can feel that uh, small clicky sound so you have a small switch which is right there in front of the antenna I mean like they have to really redo and think I, I never expected this out of a Microsoft product but anyways continuing taking other stuff apart and I'll just brief you a little bit about the board so what are things you can get out of this okay first of all is obviously the most recognizable LED okay this is a normal standard uh, I guess a red colored LED so you can go ahead and plug this off or reuse it whatever okay you have a switch which you can reuse 
you have a rotary encoder which you can go ahead and reuse so this is a 3 pin rotary encoder you have couple of pushy switches which you can go ahead and reuse they are pretty good and one most interesting part which I saw is this small inductor now there is an inductor here which made me think that there is some kind of power circuitry going on here maybe some kind of a boost conversion or a buck conversion or something going on because the IC which is a Nordic IC it is a 5 volt ordinate IC but the batteries which we are using is standard 1.5 volts battery so you can go ahead and expect that these batteries won't be able to give you um, more than uh, 4 volts maximum I guess 3.5 volts maximum if you connect them in parallel obviously now uh, it works on 3.3 volts but then you know you need some kind of a power regulator to regulate this uh, entire battery uh, thingy so first I'm coming back to my actual power case of the battery housing and one thing interesting to see is that the batteries are not connected in parallel they are indeed connected in series so if I can twist it over so you can see that these two pads are also connected in series and the bottom two pads as I've already shown is also connected in series so what this in turn means is that you're not getting 3 volts out of this pack you're getting 1.5 volts but this small guy sitting right there won't work on 1.5 volts so what that means is my first guess is that this particular circuit which you can see right here the power circuitry this is basically just a boost converter which may convert this 1.5 volts of input to approximately 3.3 volts so that this IC can uh, go ahead and be powered with it so uh, now the good part is that we can go ahead and reuse this entire circuitry without any other modifications or obviously we'll cut some cracks and all but we, we can go ahead and use the circuitry to convert any normal uh, 1.5 volt cell and get a 3 volt constant output out of it that's a big thumbs up okay uh, moreover there aren't many things else much else which you can go ahead and use in it so let's turn the board apart there is practically nothing on this side so uh, I'll just remove this casing also so there is practically nothing which is there inside on this part or this side okay so coming back to the main guy now one question which uh, is there is that you know this circuitry is working so I have the input voltages here and one good part about all these good boards uh, or a good manufacturer is that they will always go ahead and uh, provide you few uh, points a uh, few test points I would say so that you can go ahead and test your circuitry so if you can see uh, this uh, board closely if I hold it uh, maybe my camera will be able to focus you can see these small pads over there so there are many more which are hidden all over this place so these are basically called as test pads so they are uh, the part of the uh, tracks or the signals which are open so that you can go ahead and test uh, using a multimeter or some kind of a test equipment and another good part about the uh, good manufacturer is that aha uh -huh, the test pads are labeled so as you can see here that you have a test pad named as GND which is a ground so you can go ahead and use this test pad as a ground reference and then you can go ahead and see that there is a test pad right on top which says VCC underscore NRF okay that is exactly what we wanted so what is happening in this uh, on my first view is that you have this V input which is coming right here it goes through the entire boost circuitry and then to the IC now the IC is an NRF IC so the power trail which is going to the IC is through this small test pad so if we go ahead and connect a 1.5 volt source right there and connect two wires to this we get a 3 volt output again a big thumbs up so I'll conclude my video here uh, just discussed what all uh, parts we can reuse out of this um, entire board and all and uh, uh, next uh, video most probably we'll go ahead and uh, try to get the some kind of a test results out of it and see you next time so please share subscribe and uh, drop any feedback or comments that will be really helpful and i'll see you next time